I started um, quite a long time ago in 2015 after a failure of a last job in uh, over in the UK. I simply wasn't able to sustain myself over there. I came back home in my country and um, there was simply nothing for me to be able to look after myself or even my family. So first thing I did was look into a camming job and then here I was. So incredible. I hear a lot of stories like that where, um, you know, I don't know what your situation is, but I know there are sometimes moms that are like, I can't work and be away from my kids. So camming allows me to um, work from home or and make enough money. Yes, that's the case. Yes. Now you're with a studio. Yes. Have you always been with one? No, I haven't. At some point, um, I got a, I got a little bit greedy, and I thought, hey, you know what? If I can do this from inside the studio, why can't I just reproduce the whole decoration and try an independent career from home? So I did that, but what I didn't realize is that without an actual team behind you, there's no one there to tell you when you're doing things wrong or when you're slacking off or when you're getting lazy or I just couldn't do that to myself. So you really feel like you see the value in having a studio. Yes, absolutely. Um, as, a, as a result, by the time uh, um, Andra called me back, it's like she knew within an instant that I really, really, really did it really bad. And she said, well, do you want to come back for an interview? And I said, well, OK, yes. And and within five minutes, and then I went back and simply never did it again. Aww. <clears throat> Ever since I haven't left, I, that's, I didn't even try to go to another studio. That's how into it I was, yeah. And it sounds like there's like a, a degree of um, camaraderie or friendship between yes. you and the studio owner absolutely. on, you know. Absolutely, yes. Being one of the oldest assures you that too. When, when you're when you come to work, and it's it's like a hostile environment. You don't feel like you get along with people. However good that job is, at some point it feels like it can sort of bite you or just not sit well with you. This was never the case, and I'm really really happy for that. That's so true. Mm -hmm. I feel like your work environment is such a big portion of how productive you are and how well you do you know absolutely, absolutely. And, and as a result of, of this um I feel like a lot of jobs when you don't really do well you're either shut down or pushed in a corner or just being let go off this was not the case here either when whenever anyone not just me would, have, would have like a bad period, you know, psychologically or relationship wise, or just things happening in real life, really, circumstances, let's call them that. Um, people, anyone in the team will try to help you to overcome it and just do better. That's that you don't find that anywhere, really. I feel like we all need that too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we that really was, do. And that's kind of rare, actually, to have that in your profession. Most yeah. of the time in, in work, it's like, okay, what are the results? Are you getting it done? But to also have at your work where it's like, hey, are you going through something? Like, do you need some time? I'm here for you. I can encouragement. See, yeah, encouragement. Like, that must be so good for your mental health. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I love that. That's beautiful. It is. You're right. We're really lucky. I feel really lucky for that. I grew up with this. It's it's like the sort of family that I'm, I'm, we never got to have. And yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Maybe it sounds a little bit cheesy from the outside, but as soon as you sort of you know, join it. You just have to, let's say, go to a meal together out, out and about in town, and you see right away this is not an ordinary working theme. It's more than that. Yeah, it's like um, a type of family almost, probably. Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah. 
So I want to ask you, you know, why Jasmine? I did find a friend in the studio that was working for a longer time than me that was just returning from a little break of hers. And she was a bit more, um, more not spiritual, but more bubbly, more open with us. And she actually did say how good she's earning as an exclusive model for Jasmine with actual numbers. And I thought, hey, you know what? Uh, what if I actually try? So from there, it was just a, a ramp for me. It was a friend. It was someone who is um, one of the best paying models here in, in the studio and in the top 22, I think, at the moment. Wow. She was, uh, she was an inspiration for me. And she knows that too. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, that going back to that family sisterhood. Yes, exactly. Technology. Yeah. So how long have you been exclusive on Jasmine? Um, I think it was for around, let me, let me, let me think. I'm trying to think when was the year when we actually went certified. Was it 2018, 2019? Uh, by the time we, we got certified, I think I was already working exclusively for around a year, a year and a half or something, maybe something like that, I think. Um, something on the line of that, if I'm not lying. And you feel like, or you saw that your income actually continued to just grow and grow and grow when yes, you were exponentially actually. <laughs> That's what yeah. we like to hear. <laughs> yes. What would you say is your favorite part about modeling? My favorite part about modeling is maybe the fact that I'm, I'm an overthinker and that helps me to look at least 10 years back in my uh, in my past and then maybe another 15 and knowing that if me in this moment now would talk to that person there to that human being there I would be my own hero like not a hero even more I'd be a star a real hero I would really look up to me oh. and think how how just how is that possible that's beautiful so what that says to me is that you um were able to just like become what you really wanted and and to yes. change your life in the best ways because of your career Wow. It is. It's, it's a very, um, it's an opening job for opportunities of any kind. It's um, but financial independence may, means absolutely everything for me at this point. Yeah. Absolutely everything. And the fact that this can still offer me this and also call it a career, no matter what other people say, for me, it's, it's real, real secure. Mm -hmm. it's very secure so that's all I have to say the rest is just details really you know I feel like as a woman to have your financial independence and your financial freedom it is one of the most <laughs> right just delicious it things it <laughs> yes so a little bit like sticking it to men too <laughs> <laughs> ah. And what's so beautiful about this career is that, yeah, it's hard work, you know, but you get to make your money based off of, in large part, your femininity, you know, of something that I already have. It's mine. It's my weapon. It gets used however I want it. I'm curious, in what ways have you grown? Have you changed because of your career on Jasmine? Um, besides the financial aspect, I feel like I've grown more patient. That's definitely you know, one of the um, um, deal breakers for me. I wasn't a very patient person and that really didn't help me. Um, I realized that it's 
okay to be stubborn for the sake of ambition, but not to be stubborn just for the sake of it, just to prove a point. And then the thing that changed the most, I think it's that little voice inside us, inside our whole beings, you know, that voice that we first hear when we wake up before we even get to even open our eyes. That changed too. It's no longer a pessimist voice. It's no longer a, I can't do this or that voice. It's not a, trying to, you know, that 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 comes from a <clears throat> from a sense of security. That um, negative voice in your head saying, "Well, you can't do this. Maybe you can't jump that high. Maybe you shouldn't go there." That has changed too, thanks to this career because. There's really nothing that I can't do. <laughs> then oh. That's possible. That's that's not even pushing it in any way. It's true. You can do anything you like. Absolutely anything. <clears throat> that was so beautiful just now to hear you say that. It's true. And watch you because I there was so much authenticity in that. And I know that it's my story. <laughs> Yeah, I know for you that that is true. You know, like there's nothing you can't do. And that that was inspiring to just watch. Like, um, yeah, that's a really beautiful thing that this career has, it sounds like just shifted your mindset even, you know? It really did. And you're so right. We all do have an inner voice. And that inner voice really does dictate how we feel a lot of the time. Do we feel good or do we feel bad? It depends on what that voice is constantly saying. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I want to get your thoughts and your opinion on how this service really benefits the members. What, what do you think mm -hmm. they're really That's there? A very good question, actually. I think this is the... Um, you know how there's always um, um, either white or black or red or black, however you want to see this put. This is sort of like in between, in between, like a shade of gray perhaps for them because they want to get the idea of variety in their life when it comes to women without the actual consequences of cheating. Because a lot of men would get in a lot of trouble if they would cheat. So this sort of is in between, like, slithering their way in without anyone noticing. So for them, it's just the right amount of extra spice without getting in trouble, without jeopardizing their relationships with their wives, with their children, and so on. Without actually having a real life mistress, which can be a home wrecking experience. So that's why this still works and it does so well. Right. Because and of course, there is the fantasy aspect, which uh, it's very important to know that no matter how weird or just out of the ordinary your thoughts sometimes can be, there's someone there who can, you know give you a reassuring smile and tell you that you're not crazy that it's okay to have some of these thoughts in your mind and what better than a lovely smiling woman to give you a reassurance that you're still a good man no matter what that's so, so i guess that's what that's what um this still does to them to the members to the guys to the men i i, I actually don't like calling them members they're men mm-hmm so you feel like they yeah. are able to take away a sense that, well, you said a few things, you know, number one, they can still get that variety. Yes. They get to cheat sort of. Yes. Yeah. Cheat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Like they still get that without actually being around anyone physically, you know, yeah. it's literally through a screen. Yes, exactly. Um, and it sounds like they, a lot of them also come for acceptance on whatever, maybe fantasies they're having, or maybe not even fantasies. I'm sure sometimes they just want to share and talk about. Exactly. Yes. Yes. They talk about things that, um, 
um, their families at home don't accept or simply would never find the courage to share with them. And it's understandable. <clears throat> not, not, it's not always the case where men are put in a position to share things like women do. We are all right with sharing, with getting emo emotional, with seeking help or attention, or just simply being the damsel in distress. But we don't speak a lot about feminine men that have a bit of uh, an emotional self to them that they're never, never able to take it out because they're, you know, society tells them otherwise that it's not okay to do it. So they get to be themselves and we can accept that easily. It's difficult for a man, it really is. And men get rejected a lot. Oh dear, they say it all the time. Women out there just really don't like them. So here it's a chance for them to see otherwise. That's a really so, good point. For a little bit of fun. That's a really good point because you're right. You know, like, I mean, sometimes certain things are just facts of life, you know, and as women, we do tend to be much more accepted. It's, it's a lot easier for us to go to a man and get attention. Absolutely. For a man to the other way around. Yes, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's but true. You need it. Right. And so you're right. Like they know that if they're coming to Jasmine, that they are going to get that attention that they're seeking, that they're craving. That's that for sure. Need. Yeah. Do you feel like your time on Jasmine has taught you more about men and what they need in their psychology? Absolutely. Um, not only I realized the motives behind every single one of their actions, they have absolutely no reason to hide their intentions from us. Right. So... It's the man that we see in his natural habitat when he's not scared that someone's watching or that someone may judge him and he just pour himself out just like that without uh, inhibitions, yes? So that definitely taught me a lot. Not even about men alone, but about women too. Because they talk about their relationships with other women from all over the world. So it's a cultural thing more more than anything too so yes it has taught me a great deal about them so is it safe to say that your time on jasmine has served also as a sort of like education on human relationships and psychology maybe absolutely and not only that i've learned about their jobs too, about the things that they study. Some people can only find um, the needed attention or focus for their own subjects if they have, I don't know, me, for example, on their screen, just streaming on some music, relaxing and enjoying in my room. And if they have that open there, they feel like they can do anything on the side because you can always open another side and just work and be focused and concentrated it's just like having some sort of a radio behind, yes? And then they come back and tell me what they did, how their meeting went. And they talk a lot of aspects about their work too. So if anything, they're my whole world encyclopedia of everything, not just psychology and human relationships. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is, I think, a much... It's a much more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like the university of life itself. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And you're learning from people who are actually doing it in the experience. You know, you're not learning from a textbook or a teacher talking about it who's never done it. You're learning from someone's real life experience and that, as we know, they say is the greatest teacher experience. So totally because it's a, it's an experience shared it's it wasn't forced on me to learn it without wanting it someone just shares their experience so it's much easier to even remember details about it it's actually quite interesting i met 
painters, people who painted other people in these huge canvases and just really offer them back to them in, in a couple of weeks. I met real, but real computer sciences, so scientists, or I call them geniuses because, you know, you just sort of have to. Uh, programmers who feel that the, the way they program is just another language. And it actually is, it's a way of communication. It's like grammar itself. And they explain the details of that too, to you know, make it more understandable for us. I met writers and um, singers and even strippers and just all sorts of people. It's really amazing to see where these people are coming from, whether they do their desired job, what that involves, if they would rather do something else and why that is. It's really interesting. Very interesting. Absolutely. What would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned from working on Jasmine? Okay, I need to think of that. Mm -hmm. So the biggest lesson that I've learned on Jasmine is that whatever you set your mind up to, you can definitely do it with a little bit of work and a good intention and the wonderful team behind you, the sky is basically the limit. For yourself. <laughs> so one or the other. That's a that's a pretty good lesson and pretty much sums me up. It's so good. It's so so rewarding. It's unbelievable. Speaking of rewarding, um, you know, we've talked a lot about in this interview, the emotional rewards, um, the life rewards, psychological rewards, but let's talk a little bit about the financial rewards that have come <laughs> as a result. Like, what are some luxuries that you have now or oh, <laughs> you've always wanted that you have oh. now? Yeah. Well. Let's start with uh, realizing uh, maybe uh, some 10 or 11 years back, one of my friends that I used to live with back in the UK, where I told you in the beginning that I just wasn't doing that well and life is just truly exorbitant. And I was always, just always and constantly borrowing her clothes and shoes. And at some point I looked in this just huge wardrobe and saw the best and most beautiful pair of shoes I've ever seen. And it wasn't just the most beautiful because shoes can be beautiful and cheap, but they weren't. They were 600 pounds at the time. And I thought, how much does a person need to work to make that kind of money and spend it without, um, without feeling bad? like really bad without wanting to send them back, let's say. And they were seriously worn, so she didn't care for a bit. Um, I'm talking about the boots and the, you know, yeah. the red bottom shoes. To take those out and not care is uh, a bit of a flex uh, in, in my book. Years forward, sorry, um, I realized what the fuss was all about. And it wasn't just with one pair of shoes, it was with tens of them. Maybe I have a little bit of fetish, but I don't mind. It's fine. It's not something that um, a normal person here in my country would do. And the, the price of a pair of shoes like this sums up three monthly average salaries in my country. There is a price set on quality, on very good quality things. I mean, the first pair of shoes I got, I still have them and they're almost intact. It's And it's been what, almost five years now, or six. They're intact. And I've only wore them inside buildings and carpets and so on. So for me, that says, well, that's money well spent. Because I don't, I don't get to just wear a different pair of shoes every three, three months and change them because that can get expensive too. Yes, that would have cost me more money in the long run. So I got to understand that too. 
I'm basically too poor for cheap things. That's a saying we have in my country. So I have to buy quality things and that costs a lot of money, especially in a country like mine. And I'm not going back to that, to looking of all these beautiful things that are out, that are out there and just not the far to buy them or just say, well, maybe they're for someone else. No, if I want them for me, they're going to be for me. <laughs> it's very good to treat yourself. Oh, dear God. It's very good. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, you know, even I think the joy that comes from, <laughs> from being able to buy something that you love, I think that joy is worth it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's really incredible. I, I feel so honored to be able to interview models like you because it's really nice of you to say yeah absolutely because it's like um the mindset is really inspiring the mindset the you know hearing the story of where you started where you grew to and and how like open and abundant your mindset is you know it's inspiring for I think anyone to hear thank you uh, that's that's the whole point actually isn't it yeah, if only people would be a little bit more daring towards their dreams, more not just deserving because I suppose everyone deserves it, but you have to have courage. You just have to go for it. Otherwise, nobody's going to do it for you. So, <clears throat> if you could summarize what it means to be a Jasmine girl in one or two words, <laughs> what would it be? One of the things that I like to, um, it's not test, more like just put it out there and see how it is. Sometimes I just like to dress as normal as I can. I don't even put on the full face of makeup. Um, the confidence of it all, it shows even way out of there among people who have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. It rubs off on them. They like it, they get magnetized. And I know why it is. It's not just because um, of the things that I've overcome through the job, but where I am right now, this is the sum up of everything that I've achieved so far. It's very attractive to people without even trying. It, it exudes me, it, it's coming out of me, it shows I'm not, I'm not a little, you know, a, library brat I, I have confidence I have a, a good smile uh, oh yes that's another thing I have a good smile you know that that has also been one of the best things that I've achieved through uh, this line of work and it totally changed my life um, oh dear me yes so um it, it shows it and i like to see if they can sort of point it out why that is do they think i am like this because i'm in a healthy relationship or because i have a good job or just because something is backing me up i don't know i like to see if they can sort of guess it where is it coming from where is that aura that glow that exuberance coming from it's very interesting to see what people come up with and I know what it is. It's sort of like secret on a chest full of secrets, you know, and then, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just be <being> me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. I, it's like, yeah, it's like this inner secret, um, of you, you used two words that I really liked, which was like exuberance and magnetism. Yes, it shows, it shows, it really does. Obviously in this uh, industry, around this industry, there is still on the outside stigma and judgment. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is a, coming from a society that will tell you that if you're thin, you got to get thick. 
But if you're thick, you're gonna get thin. If you are too happy and exuberant, you are just trying to, you know, flaunt it in front of people. But if you're too introverted, you should speak out more. Yes. If uh, you speak too much, you should speak less. And if you speak less, you should speak more. These are the same people that we're trying to get what, um, what sort of confirmation are we expe expecting from people who have absolutely nothing to do with us, with our inner motives about doing things. Maybe the only thing that we should worry about is our families. And from what I've seen in all these years, by the time they realize that it's actually more upsetting to have your offspring do hundreds of hours a, mo a month for pennies on the dollar, <laughs> that that's where the drama is. Not when, uh, uh, well, because I suppose there's men in this industry too, both men and women decide to do a camming job. This is where, you know, things set and just opens a, opens a new world of possibilities, not for themselves, but for their families too. And like I said, in this uh, large, long experience that I've had, families get around to it eventually. They always do. So that's the only thing that you're supposed to care about because the rest are just people. That's all. And they will always, always have something to say. <laughs> no matter what you do, might as well just, you know. Your answer to this question, I like it a lot because <laughs> it's pretty much just like, <laughs> who cares about them? Exactly. You're happy. You're healthy. You're making great money. You're changing lives. You're changing your own life. So poo poo what the peanut gallery says. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a beautiful response. And I think that's a, a mindset that will keep you at peace. Yes, absolutely. And not allow other people's misunderstanding. This has been an incredible interview. One of my favorites. <laughs> um, I like to end the interviews by asking one final question, which is just what's something in your life you're the most grateful for right now? Freedom. Oh dear. That's freedom because that can cover many fields. I'm so glad to be free to just do whatever I want. I, without having to ask anyone without I can even allow myself to make mistakes and still be okay with it it's it, it's just so so fulfilling so fulfilling it really is if people don't get that you're not really a slave but who are you really where is your identity how do you allow yourself to flourish to become the best version of yourself quiet that and then the world is basically yours first of all yes freedom i mean i don't think there's any greater luxury than that number one but number two you said um i can i have the freedom to allow myself to make mistakes and still be okay that's that's something i know it is I know people living in fear of not making a mistake, of losing everything that they have because they can't, they don't have anything to fall back on. And that is just, uh, that even as a fear has disappeared from my life. So I'm really glad for that. That's why I said freedom, because like I said, it covers more aspects, including this. It really is freeing. Thank you so much for your time today and and for giving such a beautiful interview. Beautiful. Just keep being you. You're wonderful. Thank you. That's really nice of you to say. And you too. Very bubbly. I like that. Bye-bye. <laughs>